truth or scare, filmmaker Dylan Avery says that for the mainstream media, it's both. He says 9-11 was a hoax and traditional American news channels are too scared to tell the truth. Now, ABC is allegedly making the 9-11 truthers look like a group headed toward the insane asylum. Dylan made a documentary about 9-11 called Loose Change. He joins me now live from San Diego, California. Dylan, thanks so much for joining me. So first of all, I want to ask you about the latest news on this whole 9-11 uh, truthers movement. Former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura recently wrote an article questioning what really happened on 9-11. The Huffington Post put it up and then took it down, saying that they don't support conspiracy theories. What did you think about that? You know, I, I think it's funny how quickly people label any any kind of questioning regarding September 11th as a conspiracy theory. I mean, if it weren't for the the Jersey girls screaming for the formation of the 9-11 Commission, it would have never happened in the first place. And yet the, the grievances directed towards the 9-11 Commission are again lumped in as conspiracy theory when in reality they're legitimate, well thought out questions that address inconsistencies in the official report. And, you know, obviously you've had your own experience with this. I want you to tell me a little bit about that. I mean, what do you think is going on here? Do you think that part of the problem is that the mainstream isn't willing to question things enough and simply accepts the information it's being given? I think so. I think, you know, I don't, and I'm, I'm always hesitant to say that it's part of any kind of larger agenda between all the mainstream channels, but, you know, I think the Iraq war is the perfect example where, you know, for years we were we were heard this party line that he had weapons of mass destruction and all these horrible things about, you know, Saddam Hussein. And then, you know, suddenly it became cool to question the war. You know, it was all right all of a sudden to, you know, call into question the things we were doing over there. But, you know, for the longest time, I mean, if it weren't for the mainstream media, we never would have gotten into Iraq because it was with the help of the mainstream media that the administration was allowed to put out whatever claims they wanted to achieve their goals. So, you know, it's it's very interesting to see how things change over a couple of years. And uh, I, uh, I unfortunately have had very few positive experiences with the mainstream media in regards to 9-11 truth. And it's quite ironic. Our, our first mainstream media appearance that I can think of was in December 2005, and it was a Fox News affiliate out of Binghamton, New York. So this wasn't, uh, it wasn't national Fox News, but it was an affiliate out of Binghamton. And um, this was our, our first, appear, you know, our first brushing with the mainstream media completely. And we didn't know what to expect. So when the piece aired, it was surprisingly very positive and balanced. And really, it, it kind of, it, it definitely led to the formation of the media snowball that followed in 2006. But it's, it's ironic that the first one we got on the Fox News affiliate turned out to probably be the fairest uh, piece that we've ever had aired, uh, in, at least in terms of the network affiliate. And you know, you brought up the war in Iraq, and earlier I spoke with a radio host for the Young Turks, Cenk Uygur, about that. And we were talking about uh, MSNBC and how they had uh, canceled a lot of their reporters who had spoken out against the war in Iraq. And many of those had some of the highest rated shows on the network. I mean, why would they do that? Do this in a business that's supposed to be all about the money, right? Yeah, and that <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm hesitant to to point to any kind of uh, reason that I can think of off the top of my hand, but I, I think it's all about protecting certain interests, both personal and business. And you know, people <laughs> people want to keep their jobs. I think is the bottom line, and you know, they will toe whatever line they need to in order to do that. Um, I'm sure it's a I'm sure it's a very uh, sticky situation to be in. And you know, these uh, networks all have these kind of flashy ads and commercials going on. They advertise themselves as being independent and investigative, yet they won't offer up some of these alternative viewpoints that you had just mentioned and kind of let viewers decide for themselves. Are they being hypocritical, do you think? I would say so. And I think it was it was really apparent in uh, Chris Berry's questioning of us. I mean, he he wasn't there to interview us and he wasn't there to have a conversation with us on camera and he wasn't there to learn. He had a very specific agenda. And I mean, he went so far as to say, are you part of a lunatic fringe? Um, I mean, that right there was when it became very apparent he was not there uh, to do a fair and balanced job. But one of his questions was that, you know, did you start with a conclusion and work backwards? When in reality, that's what he, that's exactly what he did when he was there, because he started with the conclusion that we're all crazy. We have no idea what we're talking about. We're peddling a bunch of debunked claims or whatever, you know, cute little phrase they want to use this week. 
And, you know, he went there with a preconceived notion of what he was going to bring back. And his refusal to interview Bob McElvain made that very apparent because he wasn't there to get to the bottom of the 9-11 truth movement. He wasn't there to spread awareness. He was there to make us look crazy. And I think it backfired on him personally. Well, Dylan, I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's interesting to see what the mainstream will cover, what they won't, and how.